All right, welcome to the documentation track of the Jenkins Contributor Summit, East version. <laughs> Thanks for being here. So uh, here are some, the, the intent of this track is to help us identify things that should be on the Jenkins documentation roadmap for the next 12 months. And, and things on the documentation roadmap should advance the state of the documentation, help improve it. Um, I've got some ideas here, but before I go through my list of ideas, Zinab or Christian, Kristen, were there any ideas that you wanted to add to the list so we can be sure that they're at the top of the list? Um, how about Google season of dots? I can see some more of code, okay. Okay, good. Um, Uh, we, we might also, I wonder if we ought to put Google Summer of Code Projects, because oddly enough, there is one uh, project ideas, and mm -hmm. we should discuss that. I don't know if it will be selected by a student or not, but there's one on REST API documentation generation. Exactly. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I didn't know if we wanted to, if that was all covered in the Google Summer of Code track, or if we want to talk about it here. But. Yeah, and, and since there isn't a Google Summer of Code track, oh, okay. I think this is a great place to cover it. The Google Summer sure. of Code is sort of running on its own. So that's a good, oh, okay, cool. good, good one. Uh, all right. Any others that come to mind before I start walking through the list? Um, do we have any kind of, uh, any other convert like wiki migration stuff that we need to do we do oh, it's oh, it's a little later in okay, the list cool. so the wiki migration plan okay. is in there okay. oh oh and i've already got she code africa project ideas let's just put that up at the top so we discuss it all right cool good okay very good so so yeah we have wiki migration plan a documentation roadmap for me is sort of a that's what we're all about here but documentation inventory was one we discussed and I've made no progress on, but I think it's worth discussing. Uh, we don't really need pull request pr process and progress because that is more for our office hours than for this, this track. So that looks like it's already quite a list. Uh, anything that you think we should add to that list? Okay, then how about- um, Nothing from me. Okay, great. So then I think in terms of sorting things so that we assure we get highest priority ones done first, I'm gonna put site search the docs down below just because we'll review that one in uh, the West Coast version in about four and a half hours. So I don't think it's as urgent that we review it here. All right, so let's- Let's talk about uh, first topic would be, I think we should put on our roadmap um, that we should be involved, Jenkins project involved with SheCode Africa. I think it's a great mix of Zenob's interests and our desire to bring more contributors. And if we, if we put that as one of, our, one of our topics saying, hey, we would like to be involved with SheCode Africa, that feels like a good thing, and then we need project ideas. So thoughts that we had in the last session were around updating the screenshots because Jenkins 2.277 changes many of the screens. And it would be a good excuse to visit that and work through screenshot re retake. Uh, pipeline examples are frequently requested, but now that Zina, I don't know what your experience is with these contributors. Do they do they likely have any experience with Jenkins prior to coming to SheCode Africa? I assume not. Um. So I I can't really say. Um. But I know we have ladies in CloudTrack and um, DevOps. We have a DevOps channel. But I'm not really sure of the tools, but I think um, we should have ladies that um, have some experience with Jenkins, but I can't really say for sure. I'll have to find out. 
Okay. Um, but I can put that on my to-do list to find out um, if we have ladies that have any prior experience with Jenkins or not, so we can know um, what project ideas would be more suitable. Great, very good. Okay. But I think the screenshot is a great idea. Yeah, well, for me, this one, the screenshots would could be done even by somebody not yet terribly experienced if they're willing to go a little exactly. slowly through the process of, hey, here are the instructions that got me there. Okay. And they may say, oh, I need to update yeah. the documentation because they didn't get me to that screenshot. Exactly. Okay. And, and this second, this last one, document examples in plugins is really sort of the same as, yeah, see, I'm not sure that, I think those things are the same. It's really, in order to create an example, whoops, um, examples are, are probably, or will, uh, may be well suited to going into the plugin source code. And that's more complicated. That really is closer to a development task where we'd probably need to do some tutoring. This is how it's done. Okay. I, now um, I'm open but, to um, others. Oh, go ahead, Zinam. Um, will this require someone with um, like um, advanced, like an advanced Jenkins user or probably someone if the person just has probably like um, basic knowledge of Jenkins, the person can probably go through like um, knowledge sharing sessions, um, come up to speed, or the person has to be someone who is well vast with Jenkins, who is like knows Jenkins very well to be able to do um, the second um, project idea. Yeah, so the second one here is, is probably more advanced than the first idea, significantly more advanced. The first, I think I can see how it could be done. The second one, uh, at least for me, I needed a job, the ability to compile something with Java and then run it in order to see the results oh. of what I was creating. And so, so that's relatively more advanced, mm -hmm. whereas updating the screenshots, that's probably just a matter of us teaching them how do you create a Jenkins.io development environment and update your pictures, update the screenshot. They may even be able to do it without, without being able to do a Jenkins.io development environment. And then they just have to look at the images side by side. So um, the good thing about this bootcamp is that it's not just for ladies within Shikoda Africa, it's for all ladies across Africa. So anyone can apply, whether you're part mm. of Shikoda Africa community or not. So. Um, I think it would be a good idea to put out because um, you can put out more than one project idea. So it would be a good idea to just put um, everything out there. So select if we are able to get um, experienced applicants during the application process, then good enough, they'll be able to work on it. Then if not, we could um, settle for um, less complex um, project ideas. Great. All right. So, so during, so you can assess that during March um, because you're, you're this. The plan is to run the run the projects during the month of April, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, in March, that's when we're going to be selecting the applicants. So um, once um, we're able to agree on the project ideas, I'll share um, a Google form with you um, to fill with the project idea. So that's what we're going to use in selecting um, the participants that are going to participate in the bootcamp. So um, since it's not just for ladies within Chicago Africa community, hopefully we'll be able to get um, ladies. I think I even, I know ladies who are experienced who would like to participate in something like this. And mm. I think they'll be able to work on something like this. So. Um, I think we are good. Great. Okay. Now, Kristen, are there, as you think about that, are there other places where you could envision things where we might say, oh, this might be a good project idea? I, I would suspect site search is probably beyond the beyond the capacity of, of this project. Uh, it would require deep, deep knowledge. But 
I'm open to other suggestions. I don't think that uh, such search is a bit complicated. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, it might be, well, uh, I did a prototype with this Elastic Web Search and it was something like two hours of work. I'm just not sure if it uh, really fits uh, the program. Yeah, my my uh, good point. Okay, so well, and so that's that's a that's a good one here. Let's include that. At least we keep it in the notes. Well, it's okay. not like yeah. Um and um. Sorry, another thing I wanted to mention, so we don't, because I know this is documentation trap meeting, so um, most likely we're going to be talking a lot about documentation, but we could also have project ideas that don't have to do with documentation ideas. Right, I was um, wondering that, that as well. Coding <laughs> and, you know, other areas of Jenkins security, other areas, it doesn't have to be um, just documentation. Right, good, good point. And there are certainly plenty of places, coding activities, test automation, interactive testing, all sorts of things exactly. like that, right? right. Uh, Plugin yeah. development, there mm -hmm. are plenty, yes. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I was like, is there anything that's small or like that is like maybe not entirely related to documentation that might be useful here? Like that just like a, a like something that's going to be self-contained enough, like even stuff for the Git plugin. Mark, I know you're really involved in that, but like that could be helpful here as well. Yeah. So if if you have people who are experienced, who have some experience with Java, Zenob, then then I've got a, a very narrow one. Some tests okay. that exist today are written for JUnit three, and they need to be converted to JUnit four. And this project has been ongoing for 12 months or more with progress only as students in Google Summer of Code volunteer. So we're making some new progress now, but there's a lot yet to be done. So this one might be a possible. There are others like it where, oh, learn something about test frameworks, learn something about writing and running automated tests and, and be available, have some casual mentoring from me in the process. Okay. Um, all right. I mean, that sounds like a great project, personally. Because <laughs> like, then you get experience with writing tests, like good documentation, well, working with the community. I was like, that sounds like a great project. Um, <laughs> so, um, sorry. Another thing I wanted to ask is like, how many people? Would Jenkins be able to mentor? Because it's probably is possible if um, we have the mentors. It's possible to have um, different individuals working on different things. Say, for instance, someone working on the screenshot, someone else working on the test um, transformation. Um, as long as um, there are available mentors to monitor their progress and their work. Right. And, and I think I, I think it's a good question that I don't yet know the answer, but I think it's worth asking the question and starting it. The, the docs piece, I think I could see the docs office hours easily covering that part, part, part of mentoring, right? We could mentor once a week in docs office hours with that and, and quite comfortably. Um, the Git client plugin test rework, I could probably cover, but other additional areas we need to bring it to, to a larger group and promote and invite others to help. Okay, I think that'd be a good idea. Now, and this is only a four week, four week event, right? So it's just the month yes. of April? Great. Yes. So that, that has the additional benefit that it does not collide with Google Summer of Code. At exactly. least not with the coding portion <laughs> but, of Google Summer of Code. Yeah, that was, that was where, um, things we had to consider when choosing the um, time frame. And that's why it was short, because we didn't want it to collide with um, all the other open source programs. Great. OK. 
Okay, anything else on Chi Code Africa project ideas before we go to the next? Nope, that'll be it. Okay, hot spot for me, and Zinab, you are our sort of, sort of our classic example of this. Contributor onboarding for documentation is harder than it should be. And, and we need, we've got several challenges, right? One is <clears throat> developing on Windows is not as easy as it should be. And, and Zinab, in your case, you switch to a, a, a Linux virtual machine on yeah. your Windows computer. computer. I know yeah. Oleg's successfully done Windows-based development, but he's using WSL2, WSL. if I remember right. Yeah. Mm, actually, both WSL and WSL2 both work. I'm sorry, say that again, Oleg, I didn't catch. So you can use VSL1 as well. Oh, okay. Because Yeah, I know it's possible, but I was having issues with permissions when I tried using WSL1 and I wasn't able to resolve it. So because of time, that was why I had to switch to the Linux VM. Um, but I think it would be a good idea if we could probably have like um, maybe documentation or articles or things that could um, explain um, this all these available um, processes for people that would like to contribute. If you like to use a VM, if you like to use WSL1, WSL2, because I know um, some PCs are not compatible with WSL2. Mine is not. That's why I had to go for one. So... Well, and this feels like a, a, a very good onboarding project, right? If we just document the steps so that someone who is brand new can be successful at getting started creating documentation, that's a, that's yeah. a good project in and of itself. Yes. Now, in addition to that, there's we have pages, we have pages that include the improve this page link. And those are, I, I think we occasionally do receive contributions through those. So for example, if we go into the Jenkins pipeline and we look at this page, we'll see at the bottom of the page, improve this page. And it takes us to a page where I can actually edit. However, I'm wondering if we could improve the likelihood of people seeing that by either moving it elsewhere or in, you know, encouraging them by putting it at the top or by embedding it in some paragraphs, something like that. The improve this page for the pages where it works is quite helpful. And would allow, oops, and would allow, I'm wrong tracks, there we go. Would allow contributors but I'm, I'm a little worried that it's not uh, directly accessible. It's not immediately visible. Yeah, I thought we had talked about this page link thing before. Um, and any way to improve or to highlight that as a way to get people to, to see it and maybe even know that it is there is something they could work on would be beneficial. So. I guess, I don't know like how, yeah, yeah I, and that was... just any way to highlight that. <laughs> right. And so, so, so it sounds like no disagreement there. That's open, open topic. There's an additional challenge here, which is many of the pages on Jenkins.io are actually generated pages, so they don't have an improve this page. And, and I'm not sure that they fundamentally can. So sort of one example is the pipeline steps reference. Mm -hmm. and, and now if I look here, This, this reference page itself, I think does not have, oh, it has an improve this page, but I suspect it will take me to a place that may not be as, oh, it, it takes me to the actual page, that's good, but this is the page generator, right? This is the, 
a program that generates that page. Exactly, I was mm. like, that's not gonna be as helpful. For <laughs> then when I get into this page, I think it correctly has not included, it does not include and improve this page, but it also gives the user no way to go anywhere to help with this page. Right? It's, it's, they can look at the plugin, but the actual documentation is, well, this page, if I remember correct, Kristen, is extracted from multiple things because this help is one section of help, but then each of the arguments is its own help file, if I remember correctly. So, so this page is actually a composition of many different pages or many different files. Yes. Yeah. You could, you could capture source for some locations, uh, but I'm not sure how it would be from the user standpoint. Yeah, I mean, for, for a user who says, oh, there's a misspelling or there's an error or just something just wrong in this text, I don't, I would assume they'll, they'll want, oh, where do I go to, I wanna help with that. Where do I go to help with it? And the answer is you, gotta you go, go deep it. inside the Git plugin source code to a file that contains the word URL in its name and, and it's, it's a long mm. ways in. Well, uh, if you can adjust the hyperlink uh, uh, there, which opens uh, this uh, file uh, in edit mode on GitHub, then... Uh, ooh. So we would have uh, to put the links to where we get the help documents from? Is that what you're saying, Oleg? So. Yeah, if you do that, uh, it will be quite uh, handy for users. But, okay. uh, I do not say that it's trivial to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <I> <laughs> right, thought right, right. Like, Oh my, <laughs> but yeah, I think that that's, you're right. That would be the best place to go. And then also maybe that would encourage people to fill out additional help. Cause I think like Mark and you were, you saw someone had tried, had, was asking to quote unquote, like simply update something. Um, this would enable them to be able to go and do it themselves. Cause it's not dynamically generating something is going to make it difficult <laughs> to do simple updates. Right. Well, so, okay. So, so I think, I, I think that was a sort of a, a, a cool, that was a, co a good idea to think, consider adding a link on each parameter page in pipeline syntax to the source file for that parameter. Did, did I capture that accurately, Oleg, or did you mean something different? Like right yeah, here? Something like that. So basically, uh, basically like improve this page, but uh, for parameters, so other chunks. Right. So, so the the concept then, I think that would mean that would that page would open to something like this, and it's uh, yeah, finding it maybe even a challenge. It's in source, main resources, uh, probably Jenkins plugin. Git, git step, here we go. It's this file, yeah. right? And so we would dream of a time when URL here would have, um, I don't know, a hoverable link right next to it or something that would jump to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, okay, good. So technically it's possible. Right, right. <laughs> you can use a generator for that. Yeah, it, so I was thinking, I was like, oh, I think we just need to pull in some extra information in the generator. Um, well, generator yes. uh, takes uh, sources anyway, so it knows from where uh, to take this data. Well, at least it, I thought it was extracting them from the the, eight, the JPI file, so so it's getting them from the resources, which is thanks yeah. to Maven directly mapped to source code, right? Or almost yeah, directly so what mapped happens to source. Is we yeah, like the reason how it's able to do all this is we pretty much launch a Jenkins or like a plugin manager instance and then load everything into the plugin manager and then use plugin manager or like use class, like the information in the classes to pull descriptions and help help text. So it's not like looking at the classes, like the 
actual lines of like file names. So I don't really know how we'd be able to get that right now without doing some digging. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty much to get all this stuff, we create a plugin manager that has every single plugin loaded into it. And then hmm. goes forward from goes forward from there. So, so I, I think the class figuring out like how it's how they relate back to actual code will be interesting. And I don't know how to do that right now, but hmm. we can try to figure it out. Good. Okay. Yeah. So so I think I think that's a that's a that feels like that's probably relatively advanced because it would mean looking at the pipeline steps doc generator and extending it somehow. But if, if we have someone who has Java experience and we've, we've already got evidence that our Google Summer of Code students are able to make progress on pipeline steps doc generator, right? We've got at least one who's been investigating now for uh, a week or two and been asking very good questions about it and obviously got it running. Good, okay. Now, any other recommendations or suggestions on contributor onboarding? Zinab, you were most recently through this experience. Are there other things we should be considering? Sorry, can I, can I jump in quickly? I gotta run to a meeting. Oh uh, yes, oh Gavin, I didn't know you joined us. Go yeah, ahead. I, I, just for a few minutes. Um, the development on Windows thing, is there any interest in, in looking into switch Jenkins IO to Gatsby? So I think JavaScript works better in Windows and then it would be the same as plugin switch. I don't know how I, big of a project it is. I'm just curious if that would be an interest or you want to stick with Ruby. But so it would good. be a good uh, Google Summer of Code project. Potentially. Anyways, I got to run to another meeting. Sorry. OK. okay. Well, so so Gavin, I'm going to put hey, that Gavin. on the list and we discuss we discuss separately later. Or okay. we've got another session in four hours or so and yeah. consider because site, other site generators were on our minds, yeah. Antora, something else. So, well, the nice um, thing about Gatsby is all the UI is already done for the plugin site. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, I gotta go. Yeah, that would be a huge win. Okay, so so since he had to drop off, Kristen, can you help me? Is Gatsby is a site generator like Ostruct is, or is it a um, an ASCII a formatting spec like ASCII doc, or something that completely different? It's a framework and a set of tools uh, for JavaScript. So ah, basically, okay. uh, Gatsby you can consider it as a framework. It's a bit more than okay. a framework though. But, it, but it's yeah. used for site generation. So it's used for the generation of static static sites like like the plugin site is and like yeah. Jenkins.io uh, is. As one of the uh, options. Ah, okay. Uh, to me, it's like if we could consolidate so it's easier, like if everything is kind of using the same thing, it, it's another lowers a barrier to entry to development, right? If you already know one, it'd be easier to continue to contribute. Or I think you can share. It would be easier. Maybe it'd be easier to share themes. I don't know. But, okay. Um, to be honest, I do not think that it helps with uh, onboarding of documentation contributors. Oh, it okay. definitely uh, helps with onboarding uh, front end contributors or let's uh, website engine developers. But for documentation writers, uh, it doesn't change uh, the structure in principle. It's the remain in the same as Kidog plus some macros. So, so my experience as a writer would be that I would continue to author an ASCII doc and, and then Gatsby would do the processing to convert it to a static site like I do at Stay With Ostruct. Uh, yes. Okay, got it, thank you. Forgive my not being up to date on all those, those things, that's great, okay. So in principle, it's an interesting initiative. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether it uh, really achieves the goal of uh, onboarding contributors to docs. Right. Yeah, well, particularly now, if, if multi-platform is an issue, then if Gatsby is readily usable on all variants of Windows, that might help. But uh, that may not be as strong, as compelling an argument as we'd like. 
Mm, yeah, I do not think that it's uh, relevant at all. Oh, because, okay. well, you can uh, build uh, the website uh, on Windows as well. Why uh, you cannot build it easily? It's because um, you have make files and wrappers which are designed for the Keras environment. So these wrappers uh, uh, do not work correctly on Windows, but uh, mm. they work correctly in VSL if you configure it properly. Got it. So it's not a framework itself. It's um, uh, additional environment we use uh, to automate development. Okay, so the so the the primary barriers then in contributor onboarding really aren't the awestruck generator. It's the things that we've placed ar around it in order to make our work faster and more successful. It's, exactly. I see. Okay, got it. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Any other things we should discuss or note with regard to improving contributor onboarding? I think that we should be doing more outreach programs and we should be creating more tasks. Because historically we get contributions through various programs and outside them there are not so many activities so what could be done uh, there could be additional let's say user experience uh, hackathons or there could be ongoing programs like uh, we can dedicate some budget for spark and say that hey you create documentation based on whatever conditions you get a t-shirt um, so something like that could be doable but if you want to onboard contributors, uh, the main problem right now is not tooling, is outreach. Mm, good, okay, yeah. So so things like Hacktoberfest, um, the Google Summer of, Google Summer of, Co or Season of Docs, uh, uh, other examples like that are outreach programs um, would you think Community Bridge is a, a vehicle for this, or is it more that, that that would be a funding mechanism to to help drive it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on on contributor onboarding? All right. Next topic then was Google Season of Docs 2021. So this one, I'm. I think we should just set our goal that we want to participate. But I apologize, I have not read the, the documentation in detail to see what the, the new requirements are. One of the requirements has to do with their funding model has, or their uh, payment model has changed. Whereas previously, Google's season of docs paid the contributors directly. Uh, now they pay the, the open source project and then rely on the project to pay the contributor. Yeah, speaking of that, we still haven't received our stipend from the previous year. Oh dear, okay. All right. Yeah, I think uh, you and Marky a couple of months ago, but uh, I'm not sure whether uh, you contacted uh, JSOC. I, I definitely have not, so I need to take that. So that's Mark needs to locate the stipend from last year. That was Google season of docs? Yeah. So for JSOC, okay. we receive the money, but for JSOC, they go to SPI. Uh, for JSOC, we agreed that uh, they would go to CDF and to Community Bridge. So they may, might have reached the Linux Foundation, but uh, they haven't been uh, added to our Community Bridge account. Ah, okay. So it's. So the, the challenge there is may have gone to CDF, 
but it didn't meet, it, it didn't reach all the way, not into the Jenkins account. It's not CDF, uh, so basically CDF has no its own uh, legal entity. Okay. Um, then they use uh, Linux Foundation Treasury. So basically for all uh, Linux Foundation projects, uh, Google just sent the money to the same account. And then uh, there should be additional details and comments uh, for payments so that should have magically redirected uh, it uh, to community breach. This magic yeah. didn't happen. Okay. All right. So that that's that's one that I've got to get done then. Okay. Uh, I haven't read enough about the rest of it to tell what other requirements. I assume that they will expect project ideas and that those project yeah. ideas, oh, go ahead. Um, so I noticed there's a GitHub repository this year. I don't know, because um, I knew there was nothing like that for um, participants and organizations. So um, basically I think you have to clone the repository and add your details. Um, as a participant and also as an organization. Um, currently, I think there's just one organization there. But I don't know if others have um, joined. But I knew um, in the last um, program, there was nothing like that because I didn't have to um, add my details to any repository or anything like that. Okay, well, and it looks like we are in the right time. We are one month away from their deadline for organization applications. And, and so, so if we want to participate, we've got four weeks roughly to get that ready. Okay. And that means I've got to, I've got to work out the, the funding question or the, the funds transfer question to be sure that, that things go where they need to go. All right, let me put a link to this. All right, so March 26 is the uh, application deadline. I think another thing that's important here is do we make sure that we have, yeah, like I guess it's a nice bullet. <laughs> like, before we even try to do this, do we have good project ideas that would be worth it? Right. Yeah. So, and, and I had heard several already in just in sessions recently, cloud native um, things like, hey, more details on how you use the operator more uh, more pipeline examples is certainly an a, a frequent request from the feedback on our sites hey give me another example why don't you have an example of this and of that so All right. Any anything else with regard to Google Season of Dogs? Okay. The Google Summer of Code. We've got we've got the REST API documentation generation project that is a proposed idea. Let me get a link to that. There. Link to that. And 2021 project ideas are here. And the automatic specification generator is very much about documentation, right? Its, its goal is to provide a REST API description for the Jenkins REST APIs, but in a format that could be used 
to be, can be presented through things that present things that comply with the open API spec. Right. That's the now, Kristen. You've been you've been involved, I believe, with one of the students investigating this. Yeah, he was asking some questions, and I tried to point him in some good directions and kind of what to look at, maybe as background to get used to, like what REST generators are out there, and the the uh, what we're using for the pipeline step generation. Okay, so this this looks like a promising thing. I don't yeah, recall we'll any others. That, oh, go ahead. Yeah, as I know, it's like oh, we'll see, like how what the students' proposal looks like too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, others don't have as immediately obvious a documentation impact as that one does. They certainly all have a documentation component but it's more as a result of doing the development than it is documentation creation like that's like the, the REST API docs is. Right, I mean, I guess the first thing I was like, ooh, we should definitely make sure that as part of Google's summer of code that there's a heavy emphasis on documentation. <laughs> They're oh, just like, oh. Or like, like they need to make sure that they document their projects. I know that there's blog posts that at least should help with some of the things, but any type of tutorials that they can write for depending on whatever they did be helpful as well. Well, and and okay, there's one for me that probably, I, I'm guessing just looking at, let's look at those project ideas. Okay, this one is a plugin that will probably provide a pipeline step. Therefore, that pipeline step should have documentation for the step and documentation for its arguments and preferably some examples. Yes. <laughs> uh, this one is a pipeline step, right? And it should have documentation for its arguments, documentation for the step and examples. Yeah. Uh, now this one isn't, all right? That one's not a, the security validator thing is not a, not a plug-in per se, but this one is. So at least half of these yeah. are aching for, and maybe what we do as a, as a doc sig is periodically insert ourselves into the mentoring team saying, just parachute in briefly and say, we wanted to show you how to create documentation for the thing you're creating, just to remind you that you need to do this. Yeah, even seeing that Kubernetes operator one, I was like, oh, this is perfect. It ties right into the uh, documentation we just updated. Because right. It's a, it's a good chance for them to, the student, if a student chooses that project and it gets accepted, for them to make sure that that documentation stays up to date. Well, and and I had I we've got the action item from other meetings where we want to tutor people on how to do this, how to provide online help. I liked yours of hey, um, identify places, identify locations in existing documentation that should be updated. Right, the Kubernetes operator one makes perfect sense to do an update to Jenkins on Kubernetes. Yeah, like Xenob just wrote all this stuff. It's like let's make it's like let's make sure that all the stuff that you know Xenob you just wrote stay if if that so, project is um, works. Jenkins yeah. on Kubernetes solutions page also. Yeah. Oh page, yes, exactly. right. I mean, it's so, yeah, like she's just you, like Xenob. You just did all that work. <laughs> it's like making sure it's like making sure that it stays in sync with everything else. You know, like it's here's a chance to make yeah. sure to I guess encourage good development docs practices right where it's like hey you might be yes. changing something <laughs> well and, and <laughs> here's, here's, this, on, here's this startup guide make sure that it's what you've changed is reflected in the guide yeah yeah very good excellent okay any other any other ideas with regard to how to help google summer of code Well, the real problem is that his ideas is his mentors, having more of them. Yeah, right. then the project ideas, well, you have a lot of errors here and there, but the documentation seems to be more or less contained. So if you go to REST APIs, 
what else could we do with uh, dogs there? I don't think really too much, right? Because like a lot of, if, it's tr if the emphasis is on coding and a lot of what we're running into with docs problems are the fact that we need work, like, like documentation versus code. I don't know really what else. Also maybe pipeline examples and demos. So theoretically creating a bunch of demos could be counted uh, as a coding project. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. But I didn't know if that yeah. would count. That's inter that's a that's a good point. Do some exploration about what you can actually do with pipeline or pipeline today. Yeah, so it's not like creating one hundred hello world pipelines. But for example, if you said that uh, let's create reference pipelines, let's say for Android development mm -hmm. or something like that, uh, then it uh, magically starts resembling a coding project. Okay. And then at the same time, it solves the documentation thing. Yeah, I like that. Okay, or a a, a Golang um, development pipeline example, right? Or a yeah. Now, and Java's Java's pretty broad. Well, I guess we've we've got examples already of of Java and and NPM, and maybe calling them examples is too strong. We have tutorials for Java, NPM, Python, uh, I think are the three we've got currently. Okay. All right. Well, I think any other topics on Google Summer of Code before we go on to the next? All right. So this next topic then, improvements to the pipeline step generator, I think we've already covered. We talked about different, different possibilities that might help us a bunch there. Anything else you'd like to add there before? Uh, I, otherwise, I was just going to delete this from the notes and go on to the next topic. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> All right, next one is wiki migration plan. So Olivier wants to, um, wants to avoid having to up, wants to spare us the update, update of the current wiki. And I understand that, right? That's that's an overhead that the it's read only, not giving us a lot of value, but it has it contains lots of useful content still. The challenge there is the transformation has been difficult because it needs a certain level of skill and understanding as to what information there is useful and what is not useful. It's not a it's it's not it's no longer a directly mechanical transformation. Well, but it's still not fully automatic. And we have hundreds of stale pages. Right. So yeah, it would be possible to apply some uh, scripting magic, not automate conversion, um, but it still mm, requires some coding to do that in an automatic way. Yeah, one of the one of the suggestions that I'd heard was, hey, if we wanted to spare the spare ourselves the update, consider trying to convert it into a static site, just as is. So keep its content, but just convert it to a static site. And I'm not sure if there are tools that would do that. Um, that would well, buy us more time and not have to update the wiki software. It's possible because uh, we can just uh, use the same exporter logic to generate the ski doc pages. It might not be fancy, uh, but uh, it can be done in an automatic way. Ah, ah, okay. So the idea there would be use um, use the ADOC translator. Yeah, basically on all the pages, and then just keep them there. 
keep them there until someone can make a make better decisions about them. Yeah, it's possible to do something more sophisticated, like automatically migrate uh, content, non-plugin content to Jenkins IO or, and to create something for plugins. Uh, but if you just want to kill Confluence, maybe such static generated would be the best thing. And you can actually even avoid uh, hosting uh, this site. You can just uh, uh, add the redirects to GitHub pages. Oh, oh, I hadn't thought of that. So to GitHub pages so that they would host the site while we're in this transition period. Mm -hmm. So basically it would be transform each page into an ADOC file in a GitHub repository and then put an uh, GitHub pages front end over the top of that repository. Is that what you're saying, Oleg? Yeah. I wrote a script to do that for all the plugin pages at one point. It's really not that hard to do. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I'll have to dig. I mean, I don't know if it's worth keeping the one I have, but I just want to see if we could make a repo that was editable by people in the transition period. And it was mm -hmm. totally doable and you could be served. GitHub will serve static HTML files just fine. So basically then that would mean that a, a page on the Jenkins wiki would could be redirected directly to a page hosted by GitHub and okay, the, the layout will likely be different because the destination page will be ASCII doc, but, but rendered using the GitHub rendering. I don't know about Oleg, but I was saying do a one time to export every page through ASCII doc uh -huh. and convert it into a ADOC file and put that in a repo that's now editable by people and served by GitHub and then shut down the wiki. Yeah, I, I, that's that's what I understood. Oleg, did did Gavin's description there match what you were envisioning? It uh, it works as well. So again, if we just want to get rid of confluence, we have zillions of options, and any right. option would work. Okay, good. Yeah, and, and I think. I think that's the that that was the open question for me. I, if my original assumption on wiki migration had been not that the goal was to just mm -hmm. shut down Confluence, but it was to get the content into the a new destination and validated. But that's a a much bigger project, and I don't see that happening reasonably during 2021, not being complete anyway. And so, so this idea of a mechanical transformation or of a of us converting it to static ADOC pages has, I could see that that might be feasible in 2021 where the, the conversion of content into Jenkins.io destination pages in the official handbook is probably not gonna happen in 2021. All right. I think I, I got what I needed from that wiki migration plan discussion. Anything else there? Okay, since Gavin, you're back, adding site search to the docs, I, I have to highlight what you've already done. Jenkins, plugins, mark e wait, search by Algolia. Do you see that? Tell us about it, Gavin. Tell us, tell us how it's going. Tell us what you've learned. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. There's not, a, there's not a lot that I've learned so far. Um, I do like, so essentially, uh, plugins site originally used Elasticsearch um, embedded into the plugin site API, and it does work. Uh, it's just hard to manage. Uh, so um, I looked at uh, Algolia. So essentially, every time we build the plugin site, we upload all the results, all the all the metadata to Algolia, and Algolia can then, which will do its own searching. 
Um, the nice thing about Agolia is it also has built-in metrics. Um, I'm, we're only using the back-end side of it, but it also can do uh, front-end side as well. So uh, right now we can get a list of like what words are being searched for, uh, what phrases, how many results are returned for each um, search result. And then as Mark noticed the other day, uh, it actually does typo correction, which is really cool. So if you have a common word that you typo, it'll switch it over. I think it has synonym support. So I think you noticed that uh, one plural word was found properly. I will admit I haven't played a lot with their searching, but that's just out of the box functionality. We can actually add uh, our own synonyms. We can do, um, we could even hook up their front end analytics and it can see which, which result people are clicking on the most. Maybe not mostly, not maybe not super useful for the plugin site, but might be more useful for like the doc site itself. Uh, front end analytics. Sorry, I was going fast. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty slick, uh, and it sounds like their open source offering will work for us. Um, I'll have to see how. Uh, We'll give it a couple of days because I think we have still five days left on the, the new trial for the plugin site. Um, but, and then we'll see how much traffic we're actually generating and everything else. But I think it's totally within reason to request open source stuff. And there's no reason we can't use like site search if a fallback, if a goalie goes away or something. But I mean, it's pretty slick. And then if you look at their demos, they have uh, instant search support. So they will can actually provide you a list of search results as you type in almost real time. Like it's super, super fast. It's called so you, I'm sorry, I've got the mask on it's in here, so it's hard to hear, but I, it's called instant search. Insta instant search. Oh, Insta search. Okay, yeah. got it, like that. Yeah. So it, it will offer hints, it suggests words while I'm so, typing. Uh, that's on top of it's actually just real time fast re re response right so you can uh, like when you're typing in Google you can get results right away while you're still typing out your query. Ah, uh, okay, so they on their docs, they have tons of demos as well, so you can actually see some of this in practice and see what you need I just hooked up the basics of basic search for this. And then I actually added authors into the search because I use it. So I thought it was a nice feature to have. That's why. Oh, right. Well, and, and that was a, that was a crucial thing, right? Because um, you, you've added maintainers, authors, added as metadata. Yeah. To the search. Thus, thus we find plugins by maintainer. Yeah. Now there's no UI for that specifically, but you know, down the road, we can have, like right now we have a label, you can search for the label, adopt this plugin. There's no reason we couldn't have search by author as well, if we wanted, but. So this was just an experiment to see if it worked. I figured it was easier than trying to hook up the main site. So it's been a positive search or thing so far. Yeah, and are there, are there, are there limits in terms of how much of a load we can place on them? And have you have you hit any of those kind of limits yet of their? I have not. Uh, we've only been running this for, we haven't been running, not even 24 hours yet. So uh, there are limits. The free, the free one, which we'll, we'll be switching over to soon has low limits but the open source one is pretty high and they and from their page, it seems like they're pretty open to whatever you want as long as you talk to them about it. Um, okay. If you wanna check really quickly, if you can log into the site, you can see their overview. Okay, so algolia.com. Yeah. That's interesting. Do I already have the account logged in? I probably do. Uh, well, I know I know you have access. Yeah, and I don't see it in my. I definitely do I mean, have access. I can't log in from this laptop, so I can't show. So. Yeah, let me see if I don't. I don't see. But it. I mean, the the basic. Oh, oh no, wait. Is... Yes, of course I do. Log in with Google. Oh, Just okay. a minute. Of course, here we go. That's how I would have done it anyway. Yeah. So, so Jenkins plugin. That's my site. dev. That's my dev one. The second one is the. 
Ah, okay, good. So we're in. Tr so we used in our, we're in the free trial plan right now. We're not free yet. But we've, in 24 hours, we used five units, which includes updating uh, indexes, which I can definitely make less expensive. And how many search requests? We, we've had 4,000 search requests in the last. Um, and then if you go to the analytics on the side, you can see people who have, you know, what the searches are, the fourth one. So, yeah. 49 users, 100 searches. And on average, tabs, two searches per user. And then the tabs across the top will actually say what the searches are, what's popular, what's not popular, what has results. Now we don't have any of the front end ones, so searches low clicks doesn't work, but yeah. So wait, wait, oh, oh, you're saying searches without clicks doesn't work, right? Because because we're not giving them that data, right? Yeah. We don't have whatever. Oh, that's that's okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's. I'm mean, pretty slick with it, and I think it'll be a lot cooler for non-plugin because plugin sites can be a little bit boring in the searches. But oh, and and geography-based view of who's who's hitting the site. And if you could scroll down that page a little bit further, you can actually see the latency for each country. So Canada is the fastest, which yay we rock. Also because <laughs> I I have fiber, and I'm probably the only one from Canada searching. <laughs> That's great. Excellent. We just have to move you south by several hours, put you into Seattle or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, this has a, been a good prototype. Uh, nothing in the plugin site is committed to this yet. We just wanted to see if it worked. I mean, there's no reason we couldn't do another trial in a couple of weeks with Elasticsearch if we wanted to go that route. So I don't know. I saw that you had notes about it. I don't know if they have a SaaS product as well. Uh, yeah, there is a product. Uh... Uh, called um, uh, website search, so it's not the uh, Elastic Search per se. It's rather a standalone service, which yeah. is of course based on Elastic Search, but it's a separate company which was acquired uh, by Elastic uh, several years ago. And yeah, and I think we okay. You got it for the docs site, then that works. I mean, I could hook up a uh, one for plugins as well without much issue. It's not it's not a very complex set of data. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, uh, so, why I chose this prototype, it, uh, well, uh, it has support for synonyms and for other thing, uh, things out of the box. So for example, our, our favorite thing, this node, slave, agent search would work uh, out of the box. And also, you can index multiple domains on the same search. So, you can use uh, search for, for plugins, for website, and for, yeah. uh, I had a prototype for several engines. Yeah, Agolia has all those things, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. And then Agolia has an AI feature, which I don't know what it does, and I don't think I ever right. use it. But they have a little tab that says AI. Yeah, the and and that's the I mean at the very I, bottom. Uh, oh a, oh here we go. AI re ranking, huh? Yeah, I, I don't know what it does. And I don't think we right. use it. And it's a paid feature, but I'm just like, yeah, they have AI. That's that's cool. Okay. Well, so I think Oleg... from our point of view, both feature, both systems have similar feature sets. Yeah. Right. And both are search engines. So now, in case we can take whatever we want, we can also contact Google to see whether we could uh, get sponsorship. Yes, because you can also use Google search. The problem that uh, by default, it uh, will uh, show you uh, promoted links. So for example, we can uh, create a search in just five minutes of work. But uh, then for example, you will uh, get a paid uh, promotion by Circle CI in you know, our search layouts, which is definitely not good. Yeah. Right, right. By companies, companies antagonistic to Jenkins, right? <laughs> Yes, um, and uh, actually I contacted Google uh, in September. I asked, okay, what would it take uh, us uh, to get a sponsored uh, option? And uh, well, basically the response was that, uh, well, the Linux Foundation is not exactly a nonprofit thing uh, from our definition, so most likely not. Oh, yeah. okay. I, based on what I've seen about Google and how you communicate with them, not you, but people do, 
my preference would be Elastic or like Govia over Google. Ah, uh, okay. Just because if there's a problem, you're more likely to get no response than anything useful. Yeah. So for Elastic, we have a number of contacts. Uh, yeah, Victor uh, was going to look whether we could actually get sponsorship. So again, I contacted Elastic. And at that point, uh, the response was that uh, no, they don't have uh, such program. Uh, okay, so so you did get an answer back from them that they really don't have an open source program currently. Yes. And I can tell you flat out, uh, Agolia does because it's very public on their website. This is how you apply. This is your minimum requirements. This is what, and if you don't fit in within the, the guidelines, we can chat with you. Hmm. Good, all right. Excellent. So, so Gavin, it feels like we've got five days on the trial. I, I assume your intent is to continue through that. And now, do would it be to our benefit, strong benefit, to apply for open source sponsorship before the trial expires? Yeah, I'll. I'll, I'll the, one of their when I signed up, one of their um, well, Olivia is here too. Uh, I've been uh, I contact one of the salespeople contacted me, so I might just reach out to them. But I think that's what I'd like to do before it ends. Okay. All right. So, so the idea then is, okay. So, or so maybe yeah, tw so 20, 20 minutes ago, I received an email from um, an account manager to ask if, if we have any questions. So maybe I can try to see with him if we can have uh, 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 sponsoring. Yeah. Or we just asked to expand the trial for because we just finally got it set up yesterday. Yeah, one of us will take care of it. We'll get it. We'll get something in place to, to send this trial here before we commit to anything. Okay. okay, so Olivier, did I capture that correctly? That you were contacted just recently by an Algolia account manager? Yep. Okay, good. All right. It's part of their sign up process. So yeah. Yep. But they're they're super responsive. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's really great. Thanks, Gavin. Do you do you want me to continue to? I mean, do you want me to engage or? Uh, if you're comfortable doing it, go ahead. Otherwise, I will probably tomorrow. I can't do it tonight, so. Okay, I'll do then. Um, okay. Okay. Great, excellent. Gavin, anything else you wanted to share on in terms of progress on site search? Uh, no, um, I would like to decide at some point if we want to start giving them front end information. It seems like it could be a privacy issue, um, but it might it, it'd be interesting to see how much uh, data we can get with analytics on it. Okay, so I, I missed part of the question. So could you phrase that again? It was, uh, what kind of information are we not sharing with them? So we might right now we're doing a backend search. We're just doing an API call, um, but we're not we're not tracking to see any of the actual, let's say, uh, click information, like which results are useful for them, which that kind of thing. So uh, that would be essentially a little bit, they'd be injecting a little bit more of their JavaScript into the page, which means they potentially could track all kinds of more information about the browser and everything else. So I don't know if we want to do that, if we normally do that, if we, so I didn't hook that up, but they would be something nice we might want to do in the future. So Olivier, can you help guide me on what we do with regard to tracking right now? I thought we had some site tracking that we do for www.jenkins.io through, I don't remember, it's Google. Google. We have Google Analytics. We have oh. Google Analytics, but we disabled most of the options. So we mainly use, uh, we mainly collect information about uh, where the people come from, uh, how long they stay and stuff like that. Yeah. But for instance, uh, yeah, we don't, yeah. by default, we disable as much analytics. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, but I would I would assume it would be okay to collect 
the same kinds of information with Algolia that we're currently collecting with Google Analytics. It's no, if, as long as we don't make it worse in terms of the information we're gathering, is that a safe assumption or is that, that being too creative? From my point of view, I just didn't do it because I didn't, wasn't sure if we wanted it and it's useful, but yeah. I, I think if we want to enable, um, if we want to collect specific data, we have to be clear with the community about why we collect those data, because um, many people doesn't like the idea that we collect data by default and I'm part of them. Oh. Um, so I know that for instance, um, compared, to the U compared to the US, uh, European people are usually more concerned about um, data policies. So right. my, my approach would be we do not collect data unless we have something that we want to, to understand. I would and hold then... off until we get open source sponsorship and then we have an account manager and we ask them like what their front end collect data collection is. Because if it's just tracking on which search result you click on, then I don't think it's an issue. Like it doesn't, if it doesn't collect metrics about the user and just collects which you click on, that's fine. But if it starts collecting about saying, hey, you know, everyone in age five clicks on this link, you're like, eh, that's not what we want. Okay, that sounds, yep. So, so I think I got it correctly, Gavin, understand the metrics they are gathering before we decide to enable any of them. So yep. uh, did, that, did I phrase that correctly? Yeah, and I wouldn't even worry about it until we decide if we're doing Elasticsearch or Algolia. Like it's just not worth right. adding yet. Yeah, so so that's your conservative approach of don't gather, don't gather anything but but the very basics. Sounds really good until until a decision is made. Good. But like, but you saw the stats. I mean, we know. I mean, they they track IP requests for searches, so they know what country. That's basic searching, and we know how many searches they do, and then we know what people search for because this is the nature of what people are searching for. That's good enough for our use, I think. Right. We don't really care if they're, you know, on a phone or, you know, in uh, this country doing this search or anything else like that. We just, we're just curious about what they're searching. For. Like if you look with search res with results, uh, people are searching for Java 11 plugins. Um, that is something we should probably address. Maybe that means we have to put a warning on, or something, you know, like that's useful information. Whether they click on the third result is only care if we're going to tweak these search results drastically. We're not looking at SEOs type thing. Right, right, yeah, so yeah, okay. Here's your example. You said, you mentioned Java 11. So yeah, so if somebody's looking for that and that may indicate we need to do different labeling or yes. different, you know, because like this- Kubernetes uh, V1 point, whatever with the version, and that just means that our, we're not actually including version numbers in our search metrics. So that's something we could fix, but we don't need to know that which one they clicked on for now. Right. Good, okay. Excellent. Anything else then with regard to site search? No. Okay, the last topic I had was documentation and inventory rework, inventory and rework proposal. And basically this is We've got a lot of content on the wiki that needs to be mapped into a where should it go in the Jenkins handbook or where should it go on www.jenkins.io. And it's a, a much bigger project that the docs office hours will take on incrementally and stepwise. I don't think we need to have any deep discussion here, just noting that this is one of those things where a group of people working across several months we'll be able to improve what our final result is as we steadily move more and more content from wiki to curating it and then putting it into www.jenkins.io. That covered all the topics that we'd identified. Are there other topics we should include and in, discuss before we end this track? All right, so one of the things that's helped me in the past was if I described 
describe the things I intend to talk about during the summary session uh, tomorrow. And so I'm going to mark those here. I wanted to talk, mention that we, we think we should participate with She Code Africa. That contributor onboarding is, is a, a key topic for us. And Oleg's point about outreach programs are the most, most crucial is certainly accurate. We want to be in Google season of docs. I don't think I was going to mention Google Summer of Code because we'll be involved. Well, maybe I should because we want to be involved and we want to remind people about how to make docs effective in that environment. So yeah, let's put it. Olivier, we talked briefly about the wiki migration plan and that we need a plan. So mention that. And then site search. And for me, this is a big one. Just, just a question regarding the wiki. What about putting it on the VPN? So if we, you still want to keep it as a fallback solution, maybe we can just disable the Apache service. So we would, for instance, need, I mean, basically what I want to, to try to do is to not keep that service publicly available if we don't maintain it anymore. Mm. So if we just disable, um, so if you just put in place a firewall rule that, that block everything, um, maybe we can still keep it as a fallback I mean to find information I don't I I don't think there's any point in uh you mean like only allowing what would so what like would the, be hidden behind the VPN just logins like if it's read read only then on the VPN it's not useful anyways yeah see for me I I think Gavin your point is uh, if we make it private we've we've negated its value to the people who are currently reading it for information that's even though it's out of date it's still information i mean okay. so we can so mirror my, it like use wget mirrors so we can just dump all the content to a static html file and then serve that and get rid of the actual confluence part yeah that's uh, what we discussed yeah. uh, before you joined uh, so creating okay. a static site but once we create a static site with content, we do not need confluence. We can just yeah. kill it or right. save archives okay. somewhere, but we won't need a, a service running. Yeah, I okay, think perfect. That's, that's easier. Yeah, and and so so I think I think at least the conversations are going in the direction that um, that you were you were wanting, Olivier. That hey, let's let's make it so we're not maintaining a, a, a wiki service. And then all we have to do is get rid of LDAP. <laughs> one step at a time, Gavin, one step at a time. No, all the steps at all the time. <laughs> you you sir are an optimist. I like that. That's great. All right. And then I want to mention, okay, so those topics, any objections to my using mentioning those? topics during the, the, the presentation tomorrow at the, at the closing session. Um, no, I have no objections. I just remembered uh, Zybeck uh, did an update to the wiki uh, migration stuff to make a more accurate uh, progress indicator. I don't know anything about it, but I know he did a change to that. Oh, nice. Okay, so you're saying that the the wiki transformation, this conversion progress is now more accurate? Yeah, he changed. I don't mean I don't fully understand the change. It, it looked good and we merged it, but it's it it filters out a bunch of the plugins that are not used anymore. Um, it just had better results, and I wish he was around to say what it was about. Mm. But this is another thing that might be nice to mention as well for people who are using it. Yeah, oops, and I see I misstated numbers. We're one third of the way through our plugins. We've translated 600 and over 600 of the 1800. Okay, thanks everybody. Next meeting is the Jenkins Governance Board. I'm gonna go ahead and end this. I will post the recording of it once the recording has processed. Sounds good. See ya in a bit. See you. Yep. Bye.